Hey there fellow nostalgia time travelers, welcome to Chrononaut, the channel that takes you on a journey through the mind-bending magnitudious multiversal maze of mischief, mockery, and mayhem. Today we dive into the sewers of nostalgia to discover the radical world of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon from the 80s. Cowabunga, dudes. Let's get into it. Number 1. So, let's kick it off with a nugget from the TMNT comics, originally, all the turtles were rocking red bandanas. But when they hit the small screen, Peter Laird decided to color code these radical reptiles. Leonardo got the blue, Raphael sported the red, Donatello kicked it with purple, and Michelangelo? Well, he went orange. This color scheme became as iconic as the pizza they loved to devour. Two, imagine this. The turtles' favorite catchphrase, cowabunga, wasn't even scripted. Townsend Coleman, the voice behind Michelangelo, just blurted it out in a moment of improv brilliance, and the studio loved it so much that it became Mikey's signature line. Talk about happy accidents, huh? 3. Peter Laird's perspective on the 80s TMNT series is somewhat reserved. While he hasn't expressed outright dislike, he was dissatisfied with the lighter tone imposed by executive meddling. This deviation from the original vision led to adaptation displacement, with many of Laird's suggestions to correct the course ignored. In contrast, Kevin Eastman has consistently supported the original series, even declaring Bebop and Rocksteady as his favorite characters. Laird, on the other hand, openly expressed his dislike for the duo, feeling relieved when they were absent in Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Smash Up. For, in 1991, the TMNT shared a time slot with Wish Kid on NBC. Macaulay Culkin, in the prologue to Gross Encounters, humorously questioned the audience's fatigue with Ninja Turtles. The duel was won by the Turtles, boasting 193 episodes across 10 seasons, making it the longest-running animated series until The Simpsons claimed the title in 1998. In contrast, Wish Kid lasted only 13 episodes in one season, airing on NBC's lowest-rated Saturday morning cartoon block, which NBC abandoned in September 1992. 5. Originally conceptualized as a female turtle, Mona Lisa faced rejection from Eastman and Laird. She underwent a transformation into a lizard-like character, mirroring the TMNT's appearance. Despite alterations, the creators reportedly remained dissatisfied, instructing the show's makers not to reuse her. Plans for Mona Lisa's return after the eighth season were shelved in favor of the Lord Dreg and Carter story arc. 6. Network meddling struck again during the ninth season, sidelining Shredder and Krang to introduce Dreg. Executives demanded a hip, new character, resulting in Carter, an African-American XP of Kino from the second TMNT movie. Fan dissatisfaction prompted the firing of head writer David Wise, replaced by Jeffrey Scott, accelerating TMNT 87 toward its end. 7. VHS and DVD releases caused confusion for viewers as episodes 3 and 4 were shown in reverse order. This led to perplexity about Baxter Stockman's identity for those who missed the original TV airing. Additionally, disorderly episodes, particularly in Season 4 and the Vacation Arc, resulted in narrative inconsistencies and continuity errors. 8. A unique collaboration occurred with Michael Reeves and Bryn Stevens, a married couple during the show's production. They co-wrote the Season 2 episodes Enter, The Fly, and Splinter No More, as well as the Season 3 episode April Fool. 9. Before the Archie-published Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles adventures established its own continuity, it essentially served as an adaptation of the cartoon. The series loosely derived from the original Mirage comic book. 10. Taka and Razor, characters introduced in the second film as alternatives to Bebop and Rocksteady, later made appearances in the TMNT animated series. This creative interplay showcases the interconnectedness of the TMNT universe across different media. 11. Now, here's a shell-shocking fact for you. Michelangelo's nunchucks got the boot in later seasons. Why? Well, nunchucks were banned in many countries, forcing the showrunners to get creative. Enter the turtle line, a grappling hook shaped like a turtle shell. It was either that or have Mikey go on a ninja strike with two sausages. 12. 
Speaking of characters, let's talk about Casey Jones. In the 80s TMNT cartoon, this hockey mask-wearing vigilante never once took off his mask. It's like he slept, showered, and probably even brushed his teeth with that thing on. Must have been one sweaty mask. 13. Now, let's get dark. The original Mirage comics were gritty, featuring beheadings, curse words, and turtles boozing it up. But the 80s cartoon? Well, it took a detour into family-friendly territory. No decapitations here, just pizza and ninja action for the kiddos. 14. Ever wonder why Krang's android body looked like a sick Pillsbury Doughboy? Blame the storyboards. Peter Laird and Kevin Eastman thought it was dorky, and they tried to fix it. But it was too late, and the Dowie disaster stuck. Lesson learned. Never underestimate the power of pre-production problems. 15. Imagine recording the Turtles' banter with all the voice actors in one room. Fred Wolf insisted on it, even threatening temporary replacements for no-shows. No wonder some characters had alternative voices now and then. And hey, did you know Cam Clark and Pat Fraley, the voices of Leonardo slash Rocksteady and Krang slash Baxter Stockman, are cousins? Talk about keeping it in the family. 16. In the comics, April was a lab assistant and antique dealer. But in the cartoon, they turned her into a news reporter. Why? Well, David Wise wanted the Turtles to have a source of info in a pre-internet world. You can't Google Shredder's Lair in the 80s, you know? 17. Ever thought the Turtles would be environmental ambassadors? Well, on CBS Saturday morning, the cartoon aired Turtle Tips Public Service Announcements Tackling Environmental Issues. Because saving the world isn't just about defeating the Foot Clan, it's about recycling too. 18. Now, Here's the shell shocker. Co-creators Peter Laird and Kevin Eastman didn't dig the animated series. They disliked the shift from serious to comedic tones, the family-friendly vibe, and the toy-driven character additions like Rocksteady and Bebop. But hey, they sold the rights, so it's like crying over spilled mutagen. 19. The show almost didn't make it past the first five episodes. Playmates hesitated, networks passed, but Fred Wolf the show's mastermind, bet on himself. He snagged ownership of the first five episodes and rolled the dice, offering to subsidize the show himself. It paid off, and the turtles kept on truckin'. 20. Imagine the creators, Eastman and Laird, sitting in on voiceover sessions and cringing at what they heard. It's like watching your kids grow up and make questionable life choices, but with mutants and pizza. 21. After getting snubbed by networks, CBS eventually caught onto the turtle power phenomenon. Fred Wolf struck a deal for 26 episodes, unheard of at the time. And just like that, the turtles secured their place in Saturday morning cartoon history. 22. Editing was a race against time, and animators slipped up. Color mistakes were common. One moment Leo's bandana is red, the next it's blue, and then back to red. It's like they had a color-changing van in the sewers. Also, did you notice the TMNT cartoon is the only one where each turtle has their own personalized belt buckle? Talk about turtle fashion. In summation, there you have it, fellow chrononauts. As we grab our surfboard and ride the nostalgia wave through the sewers of the 80s, we can't help but reflect on the enduring legacy of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Be sure to subscribe for more.